Without further ado, and I will stop waffling, I promise, let me talk you through the recording process, I'll show you the drum room, and we can just literally get into the recording side. Sound good? Let's carry on. Hello everyone, welcome to the studio. It's Martin from Mayor Street Records. I hope you're keeping well, and as ever, making good music in your own recording space. I know you have one, and I hope it's all working out for you. Now listen, in today's video, I thought it would be a nice idea to record a small drum kit. Yes, small. I'm very minimal when it comes to drum kits. I'm not into the whole, let's put 28,000 microphones around the kit, figure out the phasing and hope that everyone just hears the beat at the end of the day. I am being a little bit jokey there as well. I do appreciate a great drum sound, but me personally in my own recording space, I like to keep things minimal and Today I thought I'd just walk you through what I do when I record a drum kit for a basic demo for a track. So uh, let's dive in. I'll be honest, there is another reason why I'd like to make this video. It's for my own personal use and hopefully it might help you out as well. Now, I've recently purchased a very small kick drum um, which is really designed around um, for busking or just practice or if you have a small space and you don't want a massively boomy sound coming out annoying your neighbours, um, you could use it. Now the kick drum is a Tama 18 inch little drum. It is really small but it I think personally makes a really normal good recording sound. So you can be the judge of this and we can both work together and figure out does it work, would it be passable, would anyone even notice the difference. So. Without further ado, and I will stop waffling, I promise, let me talk you through the recording process, I'll show you the drum room, and we can just literally get into the recording side. Sound good? Let's carry on. So to give you an insight for what I'm recording, this is the door, as you can see, you may be familiar, I use Pro Tools at the studio, but any door will do. Um, I've got, yes, very minimal, as you can see on the left here, the red ones are the, um, the tracks for the drum kit. So I've got a kick drum, I've got a snare drum, I've got the hi-hats, and I've got two overheads left and right. That is it. Some might say that's not enough. Some might say, you know what, you need way more. But that's what I'm doing. And also at the top here, I've got our backing track that I've downloaded, which is some piano, which I'm gonna play along to, to give it more of a musical feel. Okay, so this is the, the view I normally would be obviously sat when I'm mixing or listening to recordings, etc but I thought I'd just focus in quickly on the screen here because this is basically a monitor so I can see my drum room, which is basically a little live room that I had built recently. Um, and you can see the, the little diddy kit there. And uh, I say diddy, but I'm really focusing on the, uh, on the kick drum because as you can see, it's quite a small one. It's 18 inches, but the, the depth is quite small, which is great uh, for a smaller room and part of the test today. Um, so that's that, but then also I thought what I'd show you is quickly what preamps I'm using for the kit. Okay, so first of all, I've got the kick drum, which is being recorded via the Universal Audio 6176 preamp only. This unit is fab, it's got a 1176 compressor on the right of it, and it's got a um, the preamp on the left of it. Um, which is basically the 610B tube preamplifier. And this is what I'm using for the kick drum only. And they're my settings for now. Um, microphones will be introduced in a moment. On the snare, I'm using a DBX286S um, microphone preamp, which is, in my opinion, fabulous for the money and uh, works really nicely has its basically vocal, if you like, chain, if you were doing vocals for compression, de-essing, etc. But just for the preamp side of things and the use of the compressor built in, I think this is fantastic on the snare. Um, so we'll have a listen to that eventually. On the hi-hat, I have the Focusrite preamp, which I'm using input one, um, which is the standard interface um, preamp and uh, there's no bells and whistles about it. You can set the, um, the gain there, nice and clean. I think does a fantastic job for um, the hats. And last but not least, I'm gonna be using for my overheads, my Neve 1073 DPX. Um, in my opinion, overheads are probably the most important part of a drum recording. 
um, that and the rooms if you do bigger sort of drums etc but in my case the overheads for this recording are really important so I want to use a nice clean warm sounding preamp and the Neve uh, is probably the the one to use for that okay guys so now we're going to come into the drum room which is uh, basically my live room which I use um, for recording anything really from acoustic guitars vocals singers obviously obviously vocals choirs I meant and uh, violins have been in here we've had little quartets it's really cool I've got a a screen here which can see the control room so there's a bit of visual got some playback wedges got some acoustic bits on the wall and some props but anyway oh we got back to the future obviously a bit of inspiration and the yellow door that leads to a loo which is handy when you need to go but anyway listen me waffling will happen quite often but this is the small drum kit that we're going to record and yeah, as you can see, <laughs> this is it. Um, I've got the microphones on the on the kit already, all wired up. I've got my patching that comes into this little uh, unit over here, which is fab, which leads straight to the control room in the other building. Um, and so let's start with the kick drum, because obviously this is the thing that we're trying to figure out, will it pass for a great drum sound, or a passable drum sound, shall we say. Um, this is it, this is the Tama um, kick drum. I've got my Pearl Export kick pedal on it. Microphone wise, I'm using the Electrovox RE20, uh, which can take some you know, impact, um, quite high response, good for radio voices really close up, but also really good on low frequency, um, hence the kick drum. Got it quite close there to the, to the beta, because it's quite small. I didn't cut a hole yet into this drum kit, but the test today is does it sound good outside the kick drum? So that's that one. I'm sure you're all familiar with this bad boy, but if you're not, this is the SM57, which is a very, very industry standard uh, kick drum, sorry, snare drum microphone. So yeah, and we've got a Gretsch um, snare drum, which has got a nice big fat sound, which we like. Um, on the hats, I've got an AKG C1000S condenser mic, which is kind of just pointed downwards to the outer rim. I put the microphone um, further away from where I hit the actual snare, sorry, the, the hi-hat deliberately because I don't want to be hearing too much of a hit. I really want to get the sizzle and that's why I do that. Um, sometimes I'll have two microphones on the hi-hat, but we're going minimal today. The reason why I'd have two is because sometimes I like to tape a dynamic to it as well, just to have a different sound, a variation. But, you know, you don't have to do stuff like this. It's really your own experimentation. And most importantly, as long as you're getting a sound you like, um, everyone should be happy. And if you're the producer, you need to be happy. Next up, overheads. The purpose of these overheads, because they're quite high, um, are obviously to pick up the ride and also um, an ambience of the kit itself. Um, I ensure that they're kind of central to the snare at equal distance, but yeah, you've got to check your phasing. If things sound a little bit weird or thin, you know, play with your phase. That's what it's there for. Don't rush a recording with drums because you could do some fantastic takes with the drummer and then realize everything's wrong <laughs> just through phasing issues alone, um, which can be tricky to rectify and explain to a client. So just check your phasing, listen, use that opportunity to make a good recording. But enough of the lecture, <laughs> let's, um, let's record some drums. Okay, that'll do. 
Okay, so that was really just a take one. There's no mucking about with these videos. You know, I just literally just wanted to show you a recording. It's one take and obviously a bit of a pre setup beforehand with the drums and levels, etc. But before I show you the recordings, um, I thought I'd quickly just dive into the door to give you an insight. Um, so follow me. Um, these are the, 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 the actual drum tracks. So we've got obviously a kick, snare, hats, overheads, left and right. And I kind of do a pre-balance um, before, you know, even recording. So things, and panning, so I know how things would sound on my test recordings. Um, a test recording is massively important when it comes to drums. Why? You need to know what the things are gonna sound like before your drummer completely nails it. It kind of goes with every single Thing you record really there's no point having the talent in the room in front of the expensive mic and you haven't actually tested the sound um, but the pre-testing that I did was really levels um, needless to say balances for the microphones and also a slight EQ and also compression to ensure peaks weren't hit on the record side you can play about as much as you want beforehand but make sure your recordings are as good sounding as possible. You can't fix it later. Get it right from the start, okay? So let's have a listen. What do you think? I thought it sounded right, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm talking about the kick drum mostly. Um, this is obviously just a recording. This, it's not a mixed thing at all. Um, and ultimately, uh, yeah, I think considering it's a much smaller kick drum and it's designed for practice use and busking and you know, etc. And they try their best to ensure people know this. I think it's really good, personally, on the first listen. Um, what are your thoughts? Don't be too brutal. <laughs> um, but ultimately, I think I'm totally happy and I would recommend using this particular kick drum. Um, use a good preamp, use a good microphone, maybe use a better drummer <laughs> and it will all even be better. Um, and, you know, I think ultimately the, the test is complete. And yeah, I mean, have a listen again. I might play it again for you on the video when we sign out, but... Um, I think it's been a worthwhile experiment. Thank you for st sticking around with me. Please hit the like button, the subscribe. It means a lot. I'm a small channel. I appreciate the following. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Cheers, guys. Bye for now.